hey y'all i'm here look how i'm gonna start off with an attitude and i'm the one that's late <laughs> What's up, y'all? This is your girl, Sakina, and I'm back with another review, baby. This is my review for Ready to Love. This is season eight, episode eight, and then I got to do nine and ten. So this is going to be like a quick, this is actually going to be me watching and reacting. Y'all know I don't do that for Ready to Love. I actually take notes for this show, but because I'm three episodes behind, I don't have time for it. I did the survey last night, and y'all said, girl, get that ring light out and get to work. So that's what I'm here to do. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. I got my tea and hands. And baby, we about to get into it. So we already know it's the uh, women's week to send a man home. And they got to be introduced to their exes. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Morgan and her ex. I mean, he's attractive. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. He seems a bit younger. But then Lyndon is younger too. So maybe she just doesn't have like a necessary type tony came in with a chip on his shoulder he was sizing old boy up mentally saying that he seemed short if i'm mistaken tony definitely give off short king vibes so i don't know what he's talking about uh the ex seemed taller than tony but whatever maybe the cameras is deceiving us but um morgan she definitely acted as if you know it was surface between her and this man but the man seemed like he wanted more out of Morgan and she didn't want that. But then she goes and puts the nair in his hair because she suspected him of cheating. So it was like, how deep was this situation? How was the, the relationship? So I can side with Tony on that because, yeah, she's definitely giving off like she's lying about how she really felt about him so i could see tony's side of it and then morgan is looking at tony like she's seeing red flags because she's not liking the way that he's handling the situation but ultimately i feel like Lyndon came out on top if anything really i feel like this didn't give us any type of information on neither one of them but i felt like Lyndon came off on top because his personality was more bubblier than tony's but really i felt like this did nothing for neither one of their connections i need you to kind of like fill them out ask some questions see if they will be good potential bonus dads to your kids child he gonna see that curl from uh andre and be like immediately no <laughs> I'm very curious to find out who this lucky guy is that's what they're doing with the shag I told y'all I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> With the shag, baby. Honey, Cynthia, first of all, Cynthia, I'm going to need you to stop coming in business casual wear. Like, I'm starting to feel like the fashions ain't there for you, sis. It's really upset me now. Anyway, your ex, sis, he's very annoying. He's very confrontational. Um, He instantly started with Andre and it's like, okay, do you want him to answer the questions or do you want him to be defensive? I just didn't understand the the baby daddy's angle. Like, I understand you're the father of her children, but which I feel like was a good pick for an ex. But the way that he came, it was just too much. And then you're asking Andre why he's not ready or why he's 39 and hasn't had children and things. And then you're asking about flings. And yeah, you're asking him multiple questions. And then Andre's trying to answer. <clears throat> But Andre, where you went wrong is where you continuously threw out the fact that you've been in Forbes. Okay, you've been in Forbes, but we still don't even know what you do for a living. We know that you're an entrepreneur, but what do you do? What is your business? So I just, I, I was annoyed with Andre, but I was more so annoyed with the ex because he was definitely giving off a confrontational energy, even with Anthony there. You're asking Anthony questions and you're like, yeah, but I, I, I still don't feel like you're you're giving out the full story or whatever he was saying it's just like okay and anthony handled him right andre loved because he had something to do anthony you know he he gave off a bit of a more calmer energy than andre did and andre was calm but you know he was dealing with a lot with this ex and you know anthony was like i mean yeah you still got some questions for me you still unsure about me i mean you just met me so why would you be 100 percent on board which i agree with so then when anthony tried to leave and the ex was like stay a little longer no like shut up i really was not feeling him at all his his aim was definitely to piss the men off rather than get to know them to have an understanding and did y'all see how many drinks i it could have been editing but baby cynthia was down in them drinks because she already knew it was some shit so then we get down to jeffrey 
and you know she doesn't have an ex because neither one of her baby fathers are in her life and she has blue and mark anthony meet up so she could tell them why she's not having an ex show up to meet them blue is giving her the side eye like mm, i don't know if this is truth or excuse and i'm kind of with blue because jeffrey i don't know there's something sneaky about her that i just don't i can't put my finger on like i don't know and then knowing how confrontational she could be and stuff like that it's like yeah you i could see you being on some like i don't know i could just see her not being the angel that she portrays herself to be with her voice and stuff like that you know what i'm saying she said that with the explanation, she doesn't talk to any of her exes, like any of her flings and dudes that she's dealt with in between. And I understand that because honestly, if I was on Ready to Love, baby, who would show up? I'm not calling my ex. I'm not calling either one of them. Like, I don't, I don't know who I would, you know, have come on this show because I, a lot of dudes that I've dealt with, baby, I don't have communication with them for what? Why? Like, yeah, I could call one of my exes and his ass will gladly be on this damn show. But I don't want to do that. So, like, I get where Blue was coming from. I get where the men are coming from. But I also get where Jeffrey's coming from because, why? But also, you want to be a participant of the show and bring an ex like everybody else. So, I mean, if I had to, I would call somebody, but I really don't want to. So, basically, um... Anthony is on all of these dates pretty much, except for Marcia's date. He was with Mercedes. Mercedes' ex was like between Mark Anthony and Anthony. He's going with Anthony because Anthony has that confidence. He's ready for anything. You know, he's set where he feels as if Mark Anthony is just saying what sounds good. And I could agree with that. Anthony is very confident, and this is why I do like Anthony. He just seems very confident, knows exactly what he wants. The maturity level is there. I feel like when he's into you, he's into you. He wasn't really into Sue Ann like that. So because he's really not into Super Save Sue, the interactions were really off when he invited her to his house. But I I, I don't know where I would see him and um, Mercedes really. I would have liked Mercedes and Mark Anthony to be together, but it's very obvious that the chemistry just isn't there anymore. And I, I really seen that in this episode or in that scene. So it's just like, okay, whatever. I, I can go without them going on any more dates because it's just not there. Don't try to make fetch happen. It's not going to work. Um, I just honestly feel like I don't see anybody there for Mercedes. I don't see her and Anthony being together. Anthony and... Cynthia make more sense to me than anybody else. Um, and then we seen uh, Super Save Sue on a date with Blake and Anthony. And her ex likes Anthony more. Anthony said he's the oldest of 10 children. So, you know, he knows what responsibility looks like, y'all. Because, look, responsibility always falls on the oldest. Anyway, so, yeah. And he said, well, Blake, child, it was Blake saying that he is a communicator and he goes to therapy. You and Super Safe Sue don't be talking about sh in y'all scenes. So I'm not sure what it is that you like to communicate about. I mean, he clearly tried to open, you know, the floor to communicate with Morgan. So I'll give him that. But it's just like when y'all in y'all scenes, you and Super Safe Sue don't talk about anything, anything that has any weight to it. Anyway, who else? Oh, Marcia in her date, she took um Blue and Tony. Her ex leaned towards Tony more, but really he was just he seemed like he was in the middle. He don't know. Blue is like, I'm not sugarcoating nothing. I'm not saying that Marcia is my number one. He got two women that he's interested in and he ain't got a number one as of yet. So it's just like Blue was too laid back, Tony was too assertive and she don't know where to go but honestly i just feel like neither one of them is for you blue i do like his laid back energy i just don't know if the girl for him is there i like jonique and what they you know could have had going on but i don't know I, I like his personality but i don't see any of the women that's there being there for him that whole jeffrey thing 
y'all was just attracted to each other that's it nothing more nothing less so it's just a whole bunch of people that's floating around that i really don't see being with each other so andre invites jeffrey over to his house and he cooks her a meal and all of this since he didn't get to meet her ex and all of that jeffrey this like Danzel in distress i don't know if she's trying to do this whole let the man lead thing but like that baby boy said oh my gosh like i just feel so you're so strong and you know i'm a baby can you feed me many 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 bites oh my gosh girl what is all of that like stop and uh, like my face was like this the whole time What are you doing? Let's stop this. Now, that food that he was making looked real good, but what I needed him to do, baby, pour some of that gravy over that white rice now. Put, put some gravy in that. They share a kiss, and he got red lipstick all on his mouth, and she said after the kiss, she want to know when they're going to get married. Oh, gosh. But she still has two other connections. What y'all think? Because I'm just looking like, I don't know. Jeffrey would annoy me in a relationship just simply off of that voice she be doing. Like, girl, let's cut it out. But, I mean, I feel like Andre is a very mindful person. Um, that could be very uh, playerish of him. He could be manipulating the situation. But I do feel like he has a genuine side to him. Um, with Cynthia. I see he's trying with Jeffrey. But... I don't know. I was just more annoyed and I can't see past the annoyance. So it came down to Blue and Blake being in the bottom. And as I was watching the episode, I was like, yeah, this is the time that Blue needs to go ahead and go home. And they sent him home. Now, y'all already know I want Blake out of there ASAP. But yeah, at this moment, Blue needed to go before Blake simply because Blue really was in a gray area with the women. Nobody knew where they stood with him. He wasn't making any romantic gestures. So he was just there. And yeah, at that point, he needed to go. But Blake, you need to be up next as far as women. I would like to see um, Marcia or Mercedes go next. Because I don't really see them connecting with anybody. Like having like a solid connection with anyone. So we get into season, uh, not season, but episode nine. And it's the men introducing the women to their best friends. Andre is up first and he has Cynthia and Jeffrey. I loved Cynthia's responses to everything. Sis was ready. You know, Jeffrey, she came with it too. But, you know, I get annoyed with her. So at the end of the date, the best friend chose Cynthia for him compared to Jeffrey. I felt like when Andre said that Cynthia answered the questions too quick, it bothered him because it gave off rehearsed. That's just a woman that knows what she wants. Like, I can understand why you would feel that way. But at the end of the day, Cynthia is a grown, mature woman. She knows exactly what she wants. I just feel like he was trying to say that to deter the friend's decision. Like, I'm really feeling Jeffrey. Like, she came over. I cooked for her. We making out and all of that. So, choose her. That's what I felt like that, that was. But... The friend went with what he really felt was right for Andre, and it was Cynthia. And in this situation, when I was looking at it, I was like, Cynthia's killing it. And I loved her personality and everything. Cynthia brought it in. Yeah, I feel like though it should bring them closer, he's going to go for Jeffrey because that's who he really wants. And I mean, go for who you want, but Cynthia killed that. Mike Anthony brings his best friend to meet Jeffrey and Mercedes. And in this day, Mercedes killed it. I was definitely feeling her responses. They did not seem rehearsed. They did not sound like something that uh, they wanted to hear. Because when the friend asked, you know, how do you handle heated conver uh, conversations? She said she doesn't see herself going to bed mad. But she's going to need some time to, you know, process things out. And when he asked about the red flag, she said coming out of that homie mode and showing that, you know, I have a domestic side. I felt like those were really realistic responses. You know, Jeffrey gave the cliche, you know, I feel like communication is key. You know, stuff like that. It's just like, okay, we already know that. That's so cliche. 
everybody wants to hear that but how do you really operate in situations so when it came down to with the best friend look i'm on a road the best friend chose mercedes because she has a familiar response to a lot of things and it's like with jeffrey you know she does have children so how would he handle that and he said he felt like if he likes her enough then he'll be willing to take on the kids but really mark anthony you don't want to deal with children so you need to be real about that and not waste this woman's time because whether she says it or not, well, until she kissed Andre, I felt like Mark Anthony was definitely her number one. But she did say that she's not going to say that he's her number one because, you know, they're still getting to know each other. But Mercedes for the win. But Mercedes, I'm going to need you to show up looking a little bit more vibrant. I feel like she showed up a little more vibrant in the beginning of the season. And now she baby be looking like she tired. Like them, them flights is, is, is whooping her ass and she need a nap. So, sis, I'm going to need you to come a little, a little live. I love the hair. I love her natural hair, but I love the way that she styled her natural hair and her confessional, like the little crinkly look. So cute. Girl, show up like that, you know. Do a little something to make you look a little, a little more. I'm, I'm here, you know. You look a little tired, sis. That's it. Lyndon and his best friend, Troy, they meet Morgan. Um, Troy is handsome, but before Morgan gets there, he tells him, Lyndon tells him about the nair in the hair situation and so Morgan said the issue that she has with Lyndon is the fact that he doesn't have a five-year plan which is actually her two-year plan she's looking to get married in two years Lyndon said he didn't join this experience to look to get married within two years so y'all are on the wrong page automatically so at this point I feel like they shouldn't even go further because she's very adamant about getting married in two years so Anyway, the best friend asked about her last relationship. She said it was three years ago. He said, oh, was it the nair and the hair? And what inspired this? She said she did at the end of the relationship. She wants to make a grand exit. She had already did research to make sure she couldn't go to jail for it. And she said she's not going to run away when it comes down to the first sign of an obstacle. But, you know, uh, clearly when she fed up, baby, she is fed up. And she said she would never do that to Lenny because he's not a liar. But you don't know that now. You don't know that. You get his representative right now. And I feel like the issue between the two of them is that there's no romance. Y'all seem very cool, very homey-like, but not romantic. So I don't really see, I see the chemistry there between y'all, but friend-wise, not in a relationship, not romantically. So she left and the best friend was like, uh, red flag, baby, the size of a football field. He did not like that grand exit situation. And yeah, Morgan, it does not look like it's going well in your favor. So, yeah, at this point, if it doesn't work between Lyndon and Morgan, which I know it won't, at some point, he need to go, too, because he's just like Tony. So, Blake brought his best friend. She's a woman. And, um, you know, her situation with Super Safe, too. You know, you know, Super Safe had to make it known that she advocates for him every um, deliberation because he is definitely the cat of the group who has nine lives and continuously getting saved. So, sis is definitely a good lawyer. Okay? Anyway, um, yeah, she talked about that. She said that she had been divorced uh, for the past two years. So once Super Safe Sue left, the friend was saying that her concern is that she has been freshly divorced. So she doesn't know if that's going to show up in certain areas. But, you know, she's here for it. And she feels like it's something that Blake could or should continuously pursue. Just take his time. I said, okay. I like the friend. She wasn't trying to give off too much attitude or anything like that. She wasn't giving off catty vibes. At first, I was like, mm, he would bring a woman as his friend because he don't got no homeboys. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I don't mind women being male friends. Like, I feel like that, that can't happen. So, you know, it is what it is. And then we see Tony bring Marcia and Morgan to meet one of his homies and Morgan was definitely direct with her answers. Marcia, I don't know. She got a camera flash for me. Um, he said that he feels like, the friend feels like Marcia had good answers. Morgan was direct. So he feels like Morgan is more so about Tony than anything. And I just kind of felt like with this date, it was kind of meh. You know, there was nobody who was necessarily the star. Yes, we know Morgan was more direct so she kind of gave off that that energy more but to me both of them were just there for me 
Anthony brings his friend Miriam, who is stunning, okay? I was just looking at her face like, girl, you gorgeous. Like, yes, absolutely. Shout out to Miriam. Anyway, he introduces her to three of the women. Um, Super Safe Sue, Mercedes, and Cynthia. Now, Super Safe Sue and Mercedes, they were on the same date. Cynthia was invited to his house and they had a one-on-one. -on -one. Me and Miriam have the same idea. Cynthia for the win. Like I said, Cynthia and Anthony, they both clearly know what they want out of a relationship. When Miriam asks Mercedes about children, I like Mercedes when it comes down to this because, like I said, with the Mark Anthony situation, she answers questions genuinely with a actual real response. She said with him having kids, that is an apprehension because she doesn't know if she's ready to take on that responsibility. So they have been moving at a slower pace. Like, I really like that. With Super Safe Sue, she doesn't know how Anthony feels about her. And it's just like, he does not like you. Take what he's giving you as a sign of him not liking you. I don't even know why he invited you there because, Anthony, you really playing. You don't like her. So what what is, what is there to either even play about when it comes down to you and super safe Sue? you don't like her it's very apparent and she has all of her focus on blake so let that be what that is so yeah Miriam, we see each other like i said i've been on a road with these dates now we know who fits where and who needs to go so then we get down to deliberation and it's between marcia and super safe Sue. So, Marcia is the one who actually got sent home, and uh, Anthony is the one who told Super Safe Sue that she's actually saved this week. But then he advises her to get to know people. Honey, it's the end of the season. This is season, this is episode nine. It's a wrap. Ain't no, ain't no new connections about to spark nothing and change anything. Ain't nobody interested in Super Safe Sue but Blake, and he barely like her for real. You barely like her, Anthony. So... I mean, let's let's not, okay? And you know it's the end of the season when it's resort time. They about to do the getaway. So I'm really excited about that. I think I'm going to do that one separate because it is out and available to watch. But I think I'm going to do that one separate and then come out with this one. So um, this is where I'm going to wrap it up, okay? Okay, so I lied. I said that I was going to wrap up that last episode. But no, we're going to do all three of them in one, okay? So we get down to the getaway. And they are at the swamp with the alligators and the air... I think it's an airboat, fan boat, child, whatever it is. Y'all done seen it on plenty of shows. So they're like, Tommy, where the hell you got us at? Like, what, what is this? So Tommy pulls up in one of the boats too. And he was like, yes, this is basically the entrance to your getaway Y'all have a good time, get to know each other, and also understand that somebody is going home tomorrow. So, I said, well, dang, okay. So, this is where they got picked up at. So, somebody getting eliminated, and then they ride home. Got to be this boat to get to their car? I hope that's not the case, but whatever. So, everybody's at the house. The house is very, very nice, very laid out. And uh, everybody is finding their rooms. Next thing you know, Lyndon and Tony, they do a pool game for Morgan's honor. So whoever wins, Morgan stays the night with. And Lyndon loses to Tony. So Morgan going to be staying with Tony at the end of the night. And then we see that uh, Andre and Mercedes, they have a little bit of flirtation going on. Just a little bit. He said that they're kind of like a, a roller coaster up and down with their emotions. One minute they beefed out, one minute they getting along. So they at the getting along stage right now. And then we see Mercedes flirting with Mark Anthony. Or Mark Anthony is flirting with her. But I'm like, mm, I can't remember if Tommy said a man is going home. But I think so. I'm like, mm, you flirting with her like this because a man going home? Or what? Because you was heavy into Jeffrey. And you really wasn't checking for my girl. Or are you trying to take the advice of your friend and understand that, yes, she is definitely somebody that is more stereotyped. But let me tell you this. I don't like when people be trying to flirt talking about, you look like my future ex-wife. No, thank you. Count me out. Count me out. Don't flirt with me like that. Mm -mm. Especially if I like you. No, thank you. Don't don't speak them words to me because that, that's going to end up no good. And I mean, not every situation ends in, you know, a toxic way or anything like that. But that's not cute to say. They can, think, they can end things amic amicably. Amicably? Amicably? Baby, I know. Am I think it's amicably. 
I'm feeling like Portia right now. Let me stop. Anyway, y'all know what I'm trying to say, nonetheless. But still, I don't like that saying, don't say it to me if I like you. So then we see Andre and Jeffrey, they in the bathroom making out. And Jeffrey is like, you know, her issue or her concern is that everything is going so well between them. She's just waiting on that dun-dun-dun moment. And she expressed that in the last episode too. So then we see she's outside talking to Mark Anthony. And she's telling him that, you know, things are getting a little weird. The process is a little, you know, straining because a lot of the times when she's interested in somebody, she's giving her interest and energy to one person. And then it gets real because they're all in one setting. And that's why I just really wish that they would bring the resort back. Bring Ready to Love Resort back, last resort, because I love seeing everybody under the same roof. Like, that's where the drama really happens, you know? We get excited for the getaway because we know everybody is under one roof. You know, you got to balance your time and who's sneaking off of who and who acting funny and, you know, all of that. Like, we want to we wanna see more of that, Okay. Anyway, yeah, it's just becoming a, a lot for her. And I wonder if she expressed to him that her connection with Andre is getting stronger because they are getting very romantically involved, sneaking off to make out and things like that. Like, it does seem like he's getting higher on her interest list. And I'm talking about Andre, but it doesn't seem that she uh, shared that with Mark Anthony as of yet. So they all gather around the table to eat some good old food and... Tony tells Morgan to come sit by him. So she does just that. And uh, Lyndon goes and sits right next to Morgan. And this pisses Tony off. So Tony is clearly irritated by Lyndon. And I'm not sure why. Well, I don't want to say I'm not sure why. Because I already told y'all that Tony tries to give off this personality as if he really, you know... Lennon ain't got shit on me. Like, Morgan really don't like him. But he clearly has you bothered. And I called that out earlier on. Even the thought of him sitting next... Uh, not, not the thought. The gesture of him sitting next to Morgan irritates you. Like, this is, this is his interest, too. He's supposed to go after her. Even when they were on the little fan airboat, whatever you call it. Linda told Morgan to sit next to him. It's bothering Tony, and I thought it was interesting that Tony and Linda actually rode together with, um, I think it was with, uh, who was it? With Anthony, I think that they all three rode together, right? I was like, I know at some point Tony is going to get irritated with Linda, and clearly this is happening now to the point where Morgan got to pull him aside. Side note, this promo for Love and Marriage Huntsville, like with the classical music, Y'all, this show, I've been stopped watching it. But it's just like, it just went off and y'all putting it back on TV. Like, it, it's an overkill. And I feel sorry for the people who are still reviewing the show because I feel like they're going to have a whole bunch of nothing to talk about. So Anthony takes this time to try to get to know Sue Ann a little bit better. And she told him, baby, it's just a little too late, a little too wrong, and I can't wait. Baby, she is going for Blake, okay? She said, listen, you tried to get to know me a little too late in the game, and she gonna go over here and, you know, focus on the connection that's already built. And actually, I'm not mad at Super Safe Sue for not stringing him along and knowing exactly where she wants to be in this process because, honestly, it is too late. And Anthony, you were not genuinely interested in that lady anyway. So when he said, now I can just focus on my other two connections, baby, you already been doing it. So, yeah, I mean... It, it was nice getting to know you, baby, but go ahead and part y'all separate ways because y'all wasn't interested in each other all like that. Cynthia and Andre, they have a conversation, and Cynthia is telling him she really, because she has reservations about him too, so there, I guess they both kind of have some question marks surrounding each other. But she was like, you know, I really don't like that flashy side of you. And he was like, well, that is the side that has gotten you to this point. And that is very true because he greeted you with the flashiness and... Something about it attracted you to him. So now here y'all are. And he was like, yeah, I could be flashy, but you know, I also have a lot of depth. You know, I'm very connected to the creator and uh, you, he wants to be able to help children. He said the kids, so I don't know if that means just children in general or the children that he decides to have. And uh, he said that he experienced some traumatic things growing up and, you know, being homeless and all these things. So he understands the things that kids go through 
in life and he wants to be that model for them and i really like that because you know i had a thought to myself i actually had this conversation yes i have conversations out loud to myself and yesterday i just started talking about the type of father that i want for my children and that i will have for my children um the father that will be a part of my children's life will be a very communicative father one that shows genuine interest in my children because i feel like yes as adults it is our role to guide children through life and you know create these noble beings that have morals and all of these things but also you want to have that communication there with your parents to the point where the children feel very free to talk to you about anything and i want the father of my children to show very genuine interest in what my children are interested in not trying to necessarily dictate what their um path will be you know to an extent because like i said it's our job to do that but you know just very affectionate saying i love you kissing my kids hugging my kids you know our kids so that's just what i see for a father just a very loving affectionate communicative interested active parent and that's just what i see for for how we raise our children together um because you know i lacked some of that um growing up so i, I really when i see active dads showing genuine 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 love affection and interest in their kids and just listening an active listening parent i love that and that's what i want for for my children to have in their father so i can't wait for that and let's just go on to the next scene because this ain't about me <laughs> so jeffrey is acting so distraught because you know she doesn't know who to choose between and she's talking to morgan and Tony and Tony's like, baby, this is love. Somebody's gonna have to get hurt. And Morgan looking at him like, I know, I know you ain't saying all of this, but when it comes down to me and my two connections, you wanna give me a hard time for having Lyndon around. And she even said in her confessional. And Tony act like he got jealousy issues when it comes down to Lyndon, even though he says that he doesn't. Baby, it's very clear that he feels some type of way about Lyndon's presence. And he even said that that was the issue. Because it's like, you you didn't send him away. So what? This man is showing interest in me. And that is what it is. Like, so what? Y'all all eating together as a group. It's not like y'all had a one-on-one -on -one situation and he was trying to take Morgan away from you. So I don't understand why Tony was acting like that. And I'm glad that Morgan said it. Now that Marcia isn't here, now you want to have an issue with the two connections. But you didn't set that for yourself when you had two women that you were into. I agree with Morgan, just to clarify. <laughs> Baby, so the people are fighting, all right? So you got Lyndon asking Mercedes who her strong connection is. It's Mark Anthony. But he said, you know, since he was friend zone, it's only right to put her in the bottom or, you know, give her his vote to Mercedes to go home because the men actually have the power to send somebody home. So then they all gather around the table. Baby, uh, Anthony had the room down in the kitchen. I said, okay. So... Lyndon asked Tony a question. He asked him, what did he ask him? He said, um, who, he, who he would choose to go home. And Tony was like, well, you know, my interest is in Morgan. So as long as Morgan is here, that's all that matters. So it was really Lyndon who started this whole beef situation. And um, Tony got irritated by it. And I might be skipping some parts. But that's when Tony did ask, so how do you feel that I have a stronger connection with Morgan, that I've kissed her X amount of times and you haven't? And, you know, Lyndon hit him back and was like, well, I mean, you also said that if Marcia was here, then I can have Morgan. And Tony actually confessed to that and was like, yeah, he did say that, but he said it out of anger. And Morgan was like, well, what y'all not going to do is talk like I'm not here. And she's actually feeling some type of way that he said that because it's like, oh, so you just treat me like this is just a, uh, and I'm an object that you can just pass around. She's offended as she should be. So, baby, it's just um, a lot. It's a lot. And um, 
at the end of the day, Morgan has every right. Y'all know these um these roll up oils. They they be here today and gone the next second. But I'm also eating in between uh filming, so that's why it keeps my my lips be glossy one minute, then they don't the next. But anyway, yeah. So I. It was weird when Tony was like, I mean, we could step outside and be men about it. That's just pure deflection. He was doing way too much. And Lyndon really has you bothered. Morgan goes into the house. He has a conversation with Cynthia. Lyndon comes in and he apologizes and admits that it's definitely a dick swigging contest. So, you know, he leaves her where she is. So, everybody parts ways or whatever. We see Jeffrey and Andre in the pool. And I'm so over Jeffrey in this i don't really know how to film oh my gosh i don't know and then they start kissing and she's just like you know you just melt into me and our faces melt together our lips are molded girl shut up so then we see morgan she's in the room um tony comes in and he apologizes but morgan makes a good point that cynthia made cynthia told morgan pay attention to how somebody treats you when they're mad you said these things out of anger and he uses this as a, a man thing you know it's just a man's thing you know men we, we say a lot of things that we don't mean and she's like i don't want that like i don't want a man that's going to be like that and she said when you're when you're me when you're mad you're not nice to me and then she said that he was like well you know you got this man all in my face how you expect me to react and she was like uh, the same way that i react when you're spending time with marcia she kept her cool, so you're supposed to be doing the same thing for somebody who was not bothered or intimidated by Lyndon. Make that make sense, Tony. And then for you to keep saying, like, I think a lot of men could attest to this, that, you know, we say a lot of things that never come to fruition. Tony, you don't make sense. You claim to be this alpha male in which I don't even like to utter those words, but you claim yourself to be this leader. This strong man that, that leads the pack and all of this shit. But... Get you go and say things out of your mouth that you really don't mean. That doesn't make sense. And then that also means that you get in front of your homeboys and you start flexing. No, thank you. So then they get down to the bottom two. And it's between Mercedes and Super Safe Sue. They might do Blake a solid and save her and send Mercedes home. So, my thing is, if they send Mercedes home, then they next need to send Mark Anthony home. Because I feel like the situation between Andre and Jeffrey is getting stronger. Um, I would say send Lyndon home because he really doesn't have, even though he is connected with um, Morgan. I'm starting to feel like Lyndon is being used as a tit-for-tat thing. I feel like they really do have chemistry, but not romantically, like I said, between Morgan and Lyndon. But now I feel like when she's upset with Tony, she's going to run into Lyndon's arms. And now I see next week she's going to kiss him for the first time. But she's still open for Tony to fix the mess. But it's like, what do you want him to do? Because he did come in there and apologize. And you said that that was enough. Like, you know, what he said was enough for you to basically not want to be with him. So what what grand gesture are you waiting for him to, to make to you? I don't know. It just sounds like a toxic game between the two of them. But they left us on a cliffhanger. Um, so we don't know who gets sent home until next week. But that's all I got. I didn't give y'all three hours of show. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm not I'm not saying that it was three hours of show on the review. Because clearly I took it down to an hour. But still, I've watched three hours of TV for y'all, okay? To get this review out. I love y'all clearly. And again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see y'all in the next one. Your girl is caught up. I'm proud of me. Bye.